will tell them I'm all that one. Students like to say, um, how can we relate this in real life? For example, someone is going to the shop and you give them a hundred dollars and say, buy three oranges for me and two mangoes. They bring back ten dollars change. Tomorrow, you beg them again and you say, all right, here's a hundred dollars, but this time bring four oranges and one mango. And then bring back no change. And you're, one, you're left wondering, I wonder how much for one mango or I wonder how much for one orange. So simultaneous equation can help us to solve that problem. Now, we're not looking at worded problems now. However, the same principle can apply and it's basically the same thing. Sometimes CSEC requires you to interpret it and write it out basically and then solve. Alright, so let's go. So let's say we have 2x plus y is equal to 10 and x plus y is equal to 8. Now we have two unknown in this linear and we have two unknown. Now in order to find the value, let's see, we could find the value of y. I think that will be simpler since as a coefficient or the number in front of y is 1. So what we can do is just simply eliminate y by and then we find x first. So the first thing, because it is the same, we could just subtract because y minus y would leave us with zero but because this is an equation we simply have to do that for everything so let us do put the minus there all right let's go so it will be 2x minus x plus y minus y is equal to 10 minus 8. now 2x minus x would give us x and this as we discussed earlier will give us zero 10 minus 8 would give us 2. So therefore, x is equal to 2. So we find the value of x, and now we must find the value of y. Now we must substitute, so we can have a little narrative, substitute x equal to in equation, which one of them we're going to use? Now this seems simpler to use, x plus y, right? So we use equation 2 in this case. So it will be x plus y is equal to 8. But we know the value of x. So we can put that in. So 2 plus y is equal to 8. Therefore, y is equal to... We take the inverse of plus 2. We discussed that earlier. So inverse of plus 2 will be minus 2. So we subtract 2 from this. So therefore, y is equal to 8 minus 2, 6. And you can check your answer to see if it's correct. 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. That is for 1, but it must be correct for both. So 2 twos, 4 plus 6 is equal to 6 plus 4, 10. So it must be correct for both in order for it to be completely correct. So that is either 3 marks or 4 marks. Depends on how C6 set it that particular here. So therefore, x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. Alright, we're going to look at another one with a little more complications and so forth. This time the coefficient of x won't be the 1. So let's say 2x plus 3y and say 4x plus y and 
this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Now we are left with a different challenge. So we have 2x plus 3y is equal to 30 and 4x plus y is equal to 21. We are left with a different challenge. We can't just subtract right away and get rid of 1. So what we need to do is to bring the coefficient of one of these to be the same. Now for this one, I'm going to use 1 and 3. So we're going to get rid of y. The one that you choose to multiply by, to get rid of, you're going to multiply by the coefficient. So it's like a swap. So this would be times 1, because 3 times 1 is 3. So we multiply this by 3. Because remember what we want to do, we want to get both of them if we, um, coefficient to be 3 right here are the same. So 1 times 3 is 3 and 3 times 1 times 3 is 3. But remember, it's like you put in a big bracket and this is where students get messed up. They only multiply this term instead of all of them. We must multiply everything. In this case, 1 times anything would be anything, right? So 1 times 2x would be 2x 1 times 3y will be 3y, and 1 times 30 will be 30. And then now we're going to multiply everything by 3. So it will be 3 times 4x, which is 12x. Plus 3 times y, 3y. And remember, this is what we multiply first to bring the coefficient of both of them to be the same. Now 3 times 21 will be 63. Now we can decide how we can eliminate y. Now it's either plus or minus. In this case, we can simply see that if we add 3 plus 3, we'll get 6y. We would not eliminate y. So we need to subtract. But if you subtract for this one, you have to do it for all. So let's go now. So it will be 2x minus 12x plus 3y minus 3y is equal to 13 minus 63. Let's slide it up. So 2x minus that will give us negative 10x. That will give us 0. And this will give you 50. Negative 50 because 63 is bigger. So it will keep the sign of the bigger one. I have that in a special video, so check that out. So let's divide by 10 now, by negative 10. So you do to one side, you do to both sides. So therefore, x is equal to negative 50 divided by negative 10. x is equal to 5. Now what we're going to do now is to, because we know the value of x, so we substitute x is equal to 5, the solution of the equation we're going to use. We're going to go with this one, equation 1 this time. As the numbers are small, it's always easier. So 2x plus 3y is equal to 30. But we know the value of x, so we can say 2 times 5 plus 3y is equal to 30. 2, 5, 10 plus 3y equal to 30, right? Now we want to get y by itself, so we must get rid of this plus 10 by taking the inverse. So minus 10 from this side, but we do to this side, we do to both sides. So we are left with 3y, just to show everybody, 13 minus 10. So 3y, 13 minus 10 will give us 3. And next thing, 3 times a number is equal to 3. That number can only be 1. So y is equal to 1. And x is equal to 5. Alright guys, going on good so far. Now we looked at 1 with the coefficient is 1. We looked at 1 where to multiply. Let us look when there is a positive and a negative involved. Because that's what gets students jittery and all that. But it's the same principle. Alright? So let's go. I, I think it everybody can just pause the video and take off that. Alright, so we don't need to wait. One 